Hello, in this session we're going to look at an additional workflow tool within SubAssembly Composer uh, referred to as flowcharts or more so sequencing. Um, sequencing can come in handy when you're having multiple advanced geometry or multiple geometries within the geometry within the SubAssembly Composer. Um, you know, you look at that and it's more of a nested workflow. Uh, allows you to organize complex geometry a lot easier, a lot cleaner. Uh, what I mean by that um, is, you know, you can go through and you can put in, you know, a hundred different points and lines and links and loops and, and everything, but that flow chart, that spider web that gets created can get pretty complex. Um, there, there's ways around that. You can use your flow chart, use your sequencing to separate the different type of material, for example, that we'll look at, um, and the different geometry within the subassembly composer. So let's jump over to SubAssembly Composer and we'll take a look at a, a well-created flowchart and sequencing within SubAssembly Composer. Okay, so here in SubAssembly Composer, you can see what we have is a concrete curb, uh, curb and gutter, that has an embedded pipe in it, some materials, and also a terrace or um, a boulevard from that back of curb. So if we look at it, you can see that Within this subassembly, um, just the curb itself can get pretty complex. There's a lot of links, there's a lot of points, there's a lot of geometry in there, there's a shape. Same with the material, and same with the, the terracing, which is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. If we take a look over here at our flow chart, you can see what we've done is we've created a series of sequences. So first of all, we've got our starting point, and we've started with the sequencing. So all you do here on the left is grab your sequence, drag and drop it over to create that additional sequence in there. Um, you can name your sequence and, and so forth, make it a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna remove that. So if we look at this top one, the first sequence is curb. Second sequence would be the pipe. Third would be material. Fourth and final would be terrace. And all that sequence is is your flowchart is your geometry within that sequence. So we started with P1 and we've created our AP points, we've created our links, we've created our shapes for that. And even that one, even that curb is pretty complex and you can see there's a lot of geometry in there. Um, and so it's good to separate that. So if I go back to my flowchart, we can then look at the pipe. Okay, There's the pipe, all the information about that pipe. Back to the flow chart, we then have the material. Materials in this case are just our two shapes. So we have our concrete and we've got our sub base. And then the fourth and final flow chart um, sequence here would be the terrace. And all that terrace is is a link saying go from my back of curb to target the width or target the elevation or both. So a good way to clean up your subassemblies, to keep them organized, to keep the complex ones a lot cleaner, so that way maybe you're not the one that has to edit it or create it, it'd be easy to find where that information is. So through the use of the different flowcharts, through the use of sequencing, you can see how you can make a much cleaner product 